Music is my inspiration. It's my muse. But why should we all care? It's because we all have to learn to follow our music. It's going to lead us to the work that we want to do. And that's what's happened to me with music. It's played such a major part of my life, and I constantly listen to music no matter what it is that I'm doing. So, what do you call a person that hangs out with musicians? A drummer. That's exactly what I love. <laughs> All through high school and college, I've played in a lot of different bands of varying degrees of success. And from 1995 to 1999, I was in a really successful band. I got a chance to record a lot of fun music before and play live. It really felt like it was going to be a career. But as VH1 has taught us, all great bands come to an end. So honestly, it really wasn't that much of a shocker that my band came to an end because we were running on not so great. But uh, I had to choose between design and music. I couldn't do both, and I chose a little career in design. At the time, it felt like I was turning my back on my inspiration. I discovered that really wasn't the case because design has a musicality all its own, and it began to show me my work. You can use rhythm in your layouts, like mimicking the wall feel with staggered type, or you can drive home points and communicate your message by using dynamics just as you would in my own song. My inspiration then began to seep into my design process as well. I began focusing on the harmony of colors and grouping shapes to form melodies and emotion to great grand stories. All the lessons that I learned as a musician now inform the way that I design. And they still do to this day. So in 2009, I launched my blog, and I needed a project to help me generate the content. I looked to music for inspiration once again. I came up with the idea of doing a sketch a day for a full year based off of a song that I heard that day. It was basically my homage to my muse. This gave me the opportunity to focus on drawing the way that I wanted to while also shedding light on my design process. Like so many designers, I sketch a time during the exploratory phase, and that is rarely any of the clients I've seen in my process. And ironically, it's where the ideas come from that end up being successes, successful design solutions. So, being a designer, I had to, of course, set down some parameters. To keep the project manageable, I also challenged myself. So each drawing was done black and white to focus on ideas only. I was only allowed to revise it once. I couldn't use any references. All the song titles had to be included to focus on time. I had to do it in an hour and the remains could be repeated. The hardest thing for me to get used to, believe it or not, was actually the one round of revisions because there was going to be mistakes and they were going to be out there for everybody to see. So say if I misspelled Beverly Road, everybody was going to see that. But really what this project was about was me generating ideas from my inspiration and not finished pieces of illustration. With each post, I included a link to the song that had inspired that drawing in hopes that people would listen, would listen, to, that, would listen to that song and find the same inspiration and value. The more posts that I did, the more letter, emails and encouragement I began getting from the bands as well. Much like this email from Emily Haynes and Metro, which I was shocked to receive. So, about halfway through the project, I received recognition in a really unexpected way. How Magazine decided to feature the blog as a top 10 site in January. And while this increased my visitors, the real amazing thing that happened is I started hearing from colleagues who were inspired by my project to start personal projects of their own. At around the same time, I came up with the idea of doing a speed sketch to keep the, site, to keep the project fresh for visitors and myself as well. I filmed myself doing the drawing, compressed the, compressed the timeline, and then laid in the song that had inspired the drawing with the soundtrack. So in a sense, you ended up seeing the inspiration happen in pseudo real time. The more posts that I did, the more new music that I discovered. People would request songs from bands I wasn't familiar with. Members of one band would leave and form a new, form a new band. The lead singer of Vibralex, as a thank you, sent me the speech from the new band, the Backsliders, and she also invited me out to hear them play live, where I heard Cricket Taylor for the first time as well. Then the project took a really strange turn in the early meta, and what I mean by that is inspiration begat inspiration. Little Brazil wrote a song about my dog wrestling that I had featured in a sketch that was inspired by their song Shades. So, the people that inspired me were now inspired by me. 
And just like every great band comes to an end, every great project comes to an end. So I was left with all these notes and thoughts and emails and sketches. I didn't know what to do with them. And I remember what Emily Haynes had said earlier, and that's what this would make a rad book. And she was right, it didn't make a rad book. I ended up actually compiling everything together and created my book, which I eventually called Synesthesia. Hmm. Once synesthesia was printed, I realized the marketing tool that I had in my hands, and I began feeding the marketing machine. I reached back out to all the bands and record labels that had shown the interest and encouraged me along the way to pitch for their business. To date, it's been my most successful marketing tool. I received a ton of great emails like this one from Madeline Records, who I absolutely admire. Those leads eventually led to bank gigs and designers as we had the one that paid for the work that we love to do. City View hired me to develop merchandising and promotional materials for their band based off of the speed sketch that I had done for them. The only reason this happened was because I followed up with them afterwards. I continued to build on the body of work by pulling the most popular and most viewed sketches on the site and began developing art prints. And this gave me the opportunity to get back to silk screen, which is something I wanted to do show the work that I wanted to do, and as an added bonus, it gave me an additional source of income by being able to sell the art prints on my site. So when I look back at how music has influenced my career, it really wasn't what I initially thought that creative music made me happy. It was actually promoting it. My fondest memories of my band, IGA, were actually translating our quirky sense of style and humor into marketing materials, promotional materials, and band merchandise that fans and friends actually wanted. So my muse had paved the path of 365 sketches to the work that I wanted to do. I thank you all for listening to me talk about what my inspiration is, and I'm eager to hear what inspires you. And I encourage all of you to follow your muse because it's going to lead you to the work that you want to do. And since I've talked so much about following, feel free to follow me on Twitter as well. Thanks.